Hello friends, you are welcome to Word Encounter. And uh, this is the last part of the series, A Closer Walk with God. This is the fourth part. And uh, today our topic is getting real with God. Getting real with God. Some people know about God, but they don't know know him. They don't know him experientially and they eventually uh, end up not really, really walking with him. We're going to know how. They, they, they are so close to God, so close to knowing him, so close to, uh, they have all the advantages, but they never really, really walked with God. We're going to listen to the four star triplets and afterwards we will pray and delve into the word of God and encounter him in his word. Jesus loves us with an everlasting love. And he decided, despite our faults, despite everything, he'd give his life willingly. within my heart and its brilliant sets my life apart oh. friends who live in darkness they say that they weep for me they say my dreams have changed since Jesus took my life from Thank you, Foster Triplets, 
for that beautiful, beautiful music. Let us pray as we begin. Father, we give you glory, we worship you, we praise you. We pray that you will bless us today and help us and take all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Getting real with God. In our walk with God, we have to be real. We cannot be half-hearted. We cannot be double-minded. We have to be real with God. Somebody has said that if God is not Lord of all in your life, then he's not Lord at all. We must come to terms with these things. We must understand these things for what they are. And we must begin to uh, uh, walk with God. God is merciful. His arms are outstretched. He, he, he wants to receive you into his outstretched arms. And God wants to bless you like never before. The Bible tells us in the book of James, James 1, 6, let us read it together. It says, but let him ask in faith not wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the lord verse 8 a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways the bible is saying that we walk with god we walk by faith and not by sight. And James is saying that when you walk by faith, when you ask by faith, you don't have to be double-minded. You don't have to be wavering. One day, Elijah on Mount Carmel, uh, there was a, a, a showdown there, a confrontation. The people had been worshiping Baal and, and worshiping, claimed to be worshiping God. And uh, right there on Mount Carmel, before uh, the fire fell, uh, Elijah posed this question to the people. Why do you limp between two uh, a decision? Why can't he, if the Lord be God, follow him? And if Baal, then follow him. You cannot be wavering. You cannot be limping between two opinions. You have to be real with God. It's either you are all out with him or you are not with him at all. Jesus said, he that is not with me is against me. He that gathereth not with me scattereth. God wants you to be single-minded. He wants you to put all your eggs in one basket. In this case... There are no plan B's here. God wants you to serve him. He gave his life for you on Calvary. And he wants you to serve him with all your heart. And that's why some people will say that faith is, is, is risk taking. Because you kind of put your all there. But God never fails. And as he walks with you and talks with you, friend, he wants you to know that you are his child and he does not fail. And so that is why uh, James will tell us further. James chapter 4 verse 8, he says, draw nigh to God. You know, let me say this here. If in any way you feel far from God, it is not God who had moved away. It is you. And so James said, and we read, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So he talks about double-mindedness here. He talks about half-heartedness here. What he's saying is that you cannot serve God with a double mind. Some people 
a claim to be serving God, but there is sin in their lives. And James is challenging you. He said, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and ye double-minded. God does not take half and half service. He wants us to serve him. He wants us to serve him completely in full with gladness. And he wants us to put him first and best. You know, in Israel, God had promised that the house of David will be with him forever. He will ensure that the seed of David remains on the throne forever. But there, there came a point where God said, no, 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 no. I'm going to change that. And I'm going to only preserve you on the throne based on your attitude towards me. And so God told uh, uh, them in, in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. He said, For them that honor me will I honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. In other words, God says that my work with you is going to be determined by your response to my love, your attitude to my goodness. So God is saying, look, those who honor me, I will honor them. And we see this through the Bible. God calls us to honor him. And those who honor him, as we walk with him, he does honor them. And God is saying, my child, I love you. When we think of Judas, we think of a half-hearted man. Somebody has said that uh, Judas had the best pastor. He had the best counselor. He had the best teacher. He had uh, the best of the best. Jesus Christ. He walked with him for three and a half years. Yet, he did not commit his heart fully to Jesus. Jesus wanted to wash his heart while he was washing his feet in that upper room. But Judas withdrew his heart from Jesus. He kept his character, his ambition that were unsanctified. He would not allow the Lord to sanctify him. Yes, when Jesus sent his disciples to to, to, to cast out demons and to preach the gospel. He was there. He was part of the twelve, the inner carcass of, of, of Jesus. But he missed it. He missed it when he refused to give his heart to Jesus Christ. He was so close to Christ. Yes, he was so close to salvation. He was even taking a walk with God, but, but his heart, heart was not completely committed and that's the subtitle of of this topic it's a heart matter walking with god is a heart matter god is telling you another person we look at is Saul. Saul never fully committed to god at first actually he started well uh, he started out well but as time went on as time went on Saul's heart was not with the lord Everything the Lord would ask him to do, he wouldn't do it. He would do it his own way. And God would say, you have departed from my, my word and from my ways. And he would find an excuse for not doing the will of God. And that is serving God half-heartedly. Finding an excuse. And sometimes he finds a, a seemingly good excuse. He finds a religious excuse when he was asked to go and extirpate the Amalekites whose probation had closed and God gave him uh, 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 the mission of, of, of going to, to destroy the Amalekites. He got there. He destroyed um, uh, the people. But he spared the king and took a lot of uh, sheep. And when the prophet confronted him, why did you do that? Why wouldn't you obey God totally? He said, I brought these for offerings. He was offering a religious reason for disobeying God. Many people are doing that today. They are worshipping the saints, the angels, Mary, 
These are religious reasons. They say things that the Bible doesn't say. They say we worship on Sunday because Christ resurrected on Sunday. The Bible never said that. Offering religious reasons for disobeying God. God wants us to worship him. He gave us the seventh day of the week. He says when we when we baptize people, we should immerse them. That's the word, that's what the word baptism actually means. It means to, to deep, to immerse, to submerge underneath. And God is saying, You cannot serve me with a double mind. If you are double-minded, my walk with you, it's not gonna be a real one. And there was Esther. Esther was serving God. Now she had learned everything she could learn from, from the uncle about God. She became the queen. And then you know the plot to destroy the Israelites in Persia. The Israelites were, were to be destroyed, the plot by Haman. And then it suddenly fell on his shoulders that, I mean, she realized that she needed to do something. In fact, she was shrinking from that responsibility when the, the uncle told her that, man, you, you must commit to this. If you don't commit, you're going to be the loser. You will be killed along. And, 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 but, but God could raise a, a, a deliverance from another quarter. When she understood her place in history and she understood her place in the plan of God, she decided to commit all her heart to God. And she said, you go fast for me. I will go to the king and I will go see him and talk to him, which is not according to the law. And, and if I perish, I perish. That's a wholehearted commitment. Peter seemed not to have that complete understanding and commitment until Gethsemane when he, after he denied Jesus in the courts of Pilate, and in, in the judgment hall of Pilate, and, and he uh, went after the crowing of the, cro uh, the cock for the third time, he went out of the hall ashamed, went to Gethsemane and wept. And from then on, he started committing his, his heart to Jesus. How have you been following the Lord? How have you been following the Lord in your life? How has been your walk with God? Have you been double-minded? You know, talking about double-mindedness, the person that comes to mind readily is Mrs. Lot. Mrs. Lot was there when they do, uh, she was part of the Abrahamic church. You know, Abraham had a large number of people in his home, perhaps up to 300 or so or more. And, and they worship Jehovah morning and evening offering sacrifices, talking about the goodness and the greatness of God, talking about the faithfulness of God. Mrs. Lord, while she followed Abraham, you know, her husband was following Abraham, so she was following along too, along with Lord's uh, herdsmen and, and all of them. They were part of the household of, of Abraham, and they worshipped God. My point is that she was there. I don't know if she was always pressing her phones while the devotions were on or something. And, and she wasn't paying close attention to the, of course, you know, there were no phones in those days. Just trying to, 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 to uh, uh, bring it to, to our turn. You know, so then she, she, she left and, uh, with her husband towards Sodom. And morning and evening, perhaps, yes, of course, Lot was, uh, was, was praying and studying. But somehow, somewhere, that woman, so close to truth, so close to salvation, so close to the word, did not commit her heart to Jesus Christ. She, when, when, when finally they were brought out of the, of the city by, by, by the angels by force and they were, were taken and there, something happened. Something, something happened. The angel told them that, look, the race had become personal. 
The, your, your walk with God will become personal at some point in time. Your father should have, uh, would have been taking you to Sabbath school, wake you up for devotions in, uh, uh, devotions in the morning. But there comes a time where he had to be personal. Personal. Your pastor had been praying for you. And uh, your family members have been encouraging you to go to church, to take part in, in, in the services. But there comes a time when, when your work with God becomes personal. So they were asked to run out of Sodom and never look back. It was a personal race at that point in time. And as they were running, it seemed as if Mrs. Lot was lagging behind. As they were running, Mrs. Lot... Uh, and, and Lot himself would not dare to look back. Uh, and, and eventually, of course, because her body now was out of Sodom, but her heart was still in Sodom. So eventually, she looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. And she became a monument to generation to come that, that, that a divided heart means death. A divided heart. We cannot be double-minded. It's, it's a heart issue. She became a testimony to generations. And that's why Jesus told us, he said, remember Lord's wife. In our walk with God, we must, we cannot be double-minded. We must serve the Lord with all our heart. The religious people, the religious leaders of Jesus' day, Jesus told them this, and, and we better listen to Mark chapter 7, verse 6. Jesus made this statement. He answered and said unto them, Well, hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. It's a heart matter. You can go to church and sing praises and, and even shed tears. You can, you can be involved in the activities of the church, but if your heart is not, total, uh, is not totally committed to God, there is a problem. You fall into the, uh, uh, what Jesus referred to as, uh, a group that Jesus referred to as hypocrites. Hypocrites. God is calling you to make a decision for him. God wants you to make this decision for him and give him and fully commit your heart to him in your walk with God. We've talked about Enoch, how he walked with God. And there is that old hymn that says, when, you, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his world, what a glory he sheds on our way. Why we do his good will, he abides with us still and with them who we trust and obey. So with all our hearts, we must trust God. We must, our hearts must not be far away from God. The, the, the heart of lost wife was far away from God. And that is why she turned back and became a monument of double-mindedness. God is calling you. And he's telling you, brother, he's telling you, he said, look, you got to give me your heart. If you, if you really love me, you need to keep my commandment. It's a heart matter. In the Ten Commandments, God says that those who break his commandment, they do not love him. They actually hate him. In the second commandment in Exodus chapter 20, God said that, look, those who do not keep my commandments, they don't love me. And, and when Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments, it was just echoing what has been said by God in the Ten Commandments. Let me read it to you from verse 4 of Exodus 20. It says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children 
unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me. I want you to see that. So those who do not keep the commandments of God, and of course this is the second commandment, and I, like I told you, people, you know, there is a church that uses, uh, perhaps a couple of other churches that, that, that use uh, uh, image for, for, for worship. And they have a religious reason, like Saul, for doing that. When the express word of God have forbidden such a sin. And then he goes on in verse 6 and showing mercy unto thousands that love me and keep my commandments. So when Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, he's talking about the heart matter. It's a matter of the heart. Many people, like I said, have a form. They, they get involved in all the activities. They even preach the sermon in the church. They preach the sermon. They sing in the choir. They teach the Sabbath school or Sunday school lesson, whatever it is. And they do these things, but they, in fact, the Bible says that they even work miracles in the name of the Lord. They work miracles in God's name. And when they do that, they do it without a heart commitment to God. Let, let me read it from from Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Let me read it. This is very important. We read from verse 21. The Bible says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many shall say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy Name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk in equity. They performed miracles. They prophesied in the church and wherever, outside the church, wherever. And they did all these things. But Jesus said, I don't know you. I never had a walk with you. I never had a relationship with you. You know, people who do these religious activities, but they don't do the will of God, as we read in verse 21 of Matthew chapter 7. They are those who are double-minded, or they have been deceived by some wrong theology that as Christians, we don't need to keep the commandments of God. And so the Bible says in, in 2 Timothy, Paul was writing, uh, chapter 3, verse 5, it says, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. This is the group of people that does that. And the Bible says, from such, turn away. In other words, do not let your experience with the Lord be like that. God is telling us that it's a hard matter. If we claim to love him and know him, if we don't know him for real, he will say, I don't know you. You walk as of iniquity. So if you are claiming to, to, to be walking with God, but you don't lovingly and, and, and gratefully keep his commandments, then you're not a child of God. You're not taking a walk with God. You're taking a stroke thinking you're taking a walk with God. And such people will be disappointed in the last days. Jesus will say, I, I don't know you. I don't know you. You workers of iniquity. If we look at 1 John, 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, the apostle of love, the apostle John, writes, he says, And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandment. He that said, I know him, and keepeth not his commandment, he's a liar and the truth. It's not in him. The truth is not in, in a person like that. God is calling you today. He's calling you and I today. He wants to write his law in our hearts as we walk with him. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10. He says, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Said the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be 
to them a God and they shall be to me a people. God wants to write his law in your heart. God wants to bless you today and he wants you to walk with him. He wants you to take a closer walk with him. And may God continue to bless you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we give you glory. We worship you, we praise you. We want to take a closer walk with you. We want you to bless us. And we want you to help us and take all the glory in our lives. We may have faltered. Yes, our souls are uh, 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 maybe uh, uh, a taste of, of the waters. And we may have uh, uh, faltered and fallen. But today we pray that you raise us up in your strength and help us as we look at Calvary and see the commitments that you gave to us that you gave your whole life help us to be completely committed to you in our walk with you help us to uh, bless your holy name help us to be real with you help us to be real lord we pray today in jesus name amen amen friends do not forget to like and to and to share and and to subscribe if you've not done that and god will continue to bless you we love you from advent hero ministries and we know that god loves you and he wants to grant you eternal life may god continue to be with you till next week in jesus name amen <music>